Right, so next up, we're going to look at vectors. And this is just sort of the introduction to the idea of a vector. Um, the approach that we take in calculus is that a vector is a quantity with a magnitude and direction. Um, in linear algebra, we take a, you know, more maybe abstract um, notion of what a vector is. We look a little bit more deeply into this idea of a vector. Um, but the, the notion of a vector does originally come from physics, which is where this magnitude and direction business uh, comes about. Uh, later on, the idea of a vector, um, and in particular the algebraic properties of a vector, gets abstracted, and that's what leads us into vectors in the context of linear algebra. Um, now, the, the magnitude and direction, it's, it's not perfect, but for calculus, it's, it's, the right, it's the right way to look at it. I think it's a little bit simpler than the algebraic approach. Um, and so when we think of vectors, we think about things like velocity, right? Where we want to include both how fast you're moving and also the direction in which you're moving, right? Um, force, you know, how strong is the force and what is the direction in which the force is being applied? Of course, again, these are all quantities coming from physics. Um, but the basic... Uh, way that we can introduce a vector in calculus is, is think about, you know, a uh, sort of a directed uh, segment, directed line segment uh, between points. Okay. And so you can do this in, it doesn't matter if you want to do this in two dimensions or three. Let's draw the three-dimensional picture just, just for fun. So you imagine that you have a pair of points, right? So there's a, a point P, and there's a point Q. And we want to talk about a vector going from P to Q, and we might draw it like this. So we, think is, we, we picture it as an arrow, sort of starting at P, pointing to Q. And the notation we'd use for that is so it's the vector P, Q, we put the little arrow on top to indicate that we're talking about a vector, right? Um, so in this, in this sort of setup here, this point P would be known as your initial point of the vector, um, or, or sometimes the tail of the vector. Uh, Q, the final point, or you might say terminal point, you want to sound a little bit fancier, uh, and you might also refer to this as the, the tip or the head of the vector, right? Um, and, and so we think of this vector, say P, Q, and it points uh, from P to Q. So that's the, uh, the convention that we want to have in mind for this, okay? All right. Now, one of the sort of um, other conventions that we adopt, and again, this is a, a common physics convention, is that these quantities here, the magnitude and the direction, these are somehow the only things that we really care about. Um, we care about magnitude. We care about direction. Um, location is in some sense irrelevant. Well, maybe not irrelevant, but we want to give ourselves the freedom to kind of um, anchor the vector wherever we want. There will be situations where we're, you know, if we're talking about, say, the velocity of an object moving along a path, right, we want to draw the velocity vector with its tail at the position of the object. Um, you know, uh, and so we, we don't want to have to worry about where the vector is located. We want to say, okay, well, it's the same vector regardless of, of location as long as it has the same magnitude and direction, right? And, and so what that means is that if I kind of took those two points, P and Q, and I shifted them by a bit, right? Um, so if I kind of shift this one up here to some new point, say R, and I shift the other one, by the exact same amount. And notice I'm, I'm indicating those shifts by vectors again. So I have like a, now a point R and, and a point S, right? And I draw 
the vector rs, well then we would reasonably say that the vector rs is equal to the vector pq, right? Um, if I translate those two points by the, by the same amount and in the same direction, then the distance between them is not going to change, right? And the direction going from one to the other is not going to change. Um, and as we sort of develop some of the algebra of vectors, we're going to see that, oh, this actually, you know, we can make sense of this algebraically as well. Um, in the sense that, well, there, there's another vector here, and it's the same one there. Um, and when we kind of do these subtraction things, we'll see that the, the shift part sort of cancels out. It doesn't really matter. Right? Um, and, and so we would consider those to be the same vector. Okay. Now, in particular, one of the things, since, since we only care about magnitude and direction, and we don't care about location, uh, you can introduce an idea of sort of like a, a standard position. And the standard position is, is the one where you have the, the tail, the initial point, at the origin. Right? And this tends to be kind of convenient because if you draw, if you draw your vector with the tail at the origin as sort of a reference point, right, I'm going to some point, let's say P, right, we'll call it the origin O, right, then we have this vector OP. And if P has coordinates, so let's say P has coordinates x, y, and z, and we want to describe the, the, the vector OP, right, and, and sometimes we'll just call this, say, like V, you know, V for vector, right? Um, so V, the vector OP. Well, we can express it in terms of those same coordinates. Now, the only thing we really change here is instead of using parentheses, we're going to use angle brackets x, y, z, and we'll write it like that. Um, in other contexts, in particular in linear algebra, you might also see this written as either a row or a column vector. So if you're in linear algebra, you might see it written like that. Um, that notation uh, tends to work better if you're talking about like matrix transformations, which is one of the things you would deal with in linear algebra. Um, that's a more convenient notation to use. Um, there's also ways you can do it using row vectors if you prefer. Okay. But we'll stick with the, the angle bracket notation. It's the one that's used in the textbook. Uh, we'll try to align with the textbook as, as well as we can. Okay. So um, one of the things you'll, you'll notice is you can kind of take this, this idea here. And, and if you did have sort of a vector from, say, P to Q, um, and say P has coordinates say x1, y1, z1, and, and q has coordinates x2, y2, and z2, right? Then this vector pq, you can write it as, as x2 minus x1, and then y2 minus y1, and z2 minus z1. So you can write it in this, this component form like this. Um, and, and one way to think about this is, is these numbers, right? Think of a vector as directions, right? I mean, directions in the sense of, you know, how to get from point P to point Q, right? You need to know which way you're going and how far you should go, right? And so this says, well, if you start at the point X1, Y1, Z1, and you change the X coordinate by the amount X2 minus X1, so if you add that to X1, then of course you get x2, right? Take y2 minus y1, add it to y1, you get y2, and same for z, right? And so in particular, if you're starting at the origin and you change x by x and y by y and z by z, you will move from the origin to the point x, y, z. So I think that's one way that you maybe want to think about this. It's giving you these directions, how to get from one point to another. Uh, and we're going to play around and realize that this component form, giving these numbers, telling us which way to go, uh, there's actually quite a bit you can do with it. So we're going to play around. We're going to see some of the things that we can do. In particular, we'll talk about things like addition. Uh, we'll talk about scaling. And then we'll get into some other um, 
sort of geometric aspects of dealing with vectors um, in later sections.